Well, welcome back to Stocks to Watch as we dive into EcoWave Power, a leading onshore wave energy developer, changing the world one wave at a time. Trading on the NASDAQ under WAVE, we are joined by Ina Braverman, the founder and CEO, to discuss. First and foremost, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, such a pleasure to get you on. So I just want to dive into this. You recently visited the Los Angeles site of EcoWave Power's first U.S. wave energy project, and you confirmed the official launch date with Terry, the CEO of Alta C. But when is this highly anticipated opening scheduled to take place? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So we're planning to open our first U.S.-based uh, wave energy generation pilot in the port of Los Angeles, which at the premises of Alta C uh, on the 9th of September. And we're very, very excited about our first project in the U.S. We put a lot of efforts to create the proper regulations and uh, to work with the Army Corps of Engineers and with the Port of L.A. to enable this uh, grand opening. Yeah. And why did you uh, select Alta C at the Port of Los Angeles as the location for this historic project? And who's kind of handling the manufacturing of the floaters? And uh, why were they chosen? So we selected Alta C in the Port of LA because how they fit to our mission statement. We generate clean energy from ocean and sea, wave, sea waves, and Alta C is basically a hub for the promotion of blue technologies, of water-related technologies in the United States. So it fits very well together. Uh, also, the fact that they're located in the Port of LA, which is one of the busiest and largest ports in the United States, and it's also a point of main interest to uh, to EcoWave Power because their external breakwater is sufficient to 20 to 60 megawatts of power, which is around 20,000 to 60,000 household at, on one port alone. So for us doing the pilot, there is the first step and our hope uh, and plan is to expand it uh, to greater sizes at later, later stages. And we chose to do the construction uh, of the floaters using a company called Always Metal. Uh, it's a company that is a female-owned company, which is quite rare in the steel manufacturing business. Uh, so we're very happy to support a woman-owned business, a smaller scale business, and to create workplaces, showing that not only we can produce clean energy from the waves from the, for the benefit of the population, uh, but we can also create workplaces and new industry in the United States. Yeah, no, I definitely appreciate the insight. And between now and the launch, I mean, what are the key milestones and preparations that need to be uh, completed? Uh, Always Metal already finished the production of the floaters. Uh, right now, uh, some of them have been already painted with special marine painting to be deployed in the water. Uh, the rest are going to painting. As soon as everything is painted, uh, Always Metal is going to assemble the units. And once the units are fully assembled, we're going to bring them uh, to the site in the Port of LA, to the deployment site. And we're going to uh, sign an agreement, which we're already in final steps uh, with the local installer, also a small business, a family owned business that will install uh, the floaters. And then that's it. We can open the project officially. No, incredible. And this project represents a major milestone, not only for EcoWave Power, but also for the U.S. renewable energy sector. Do you want to talk about why this is significant and what the long-term impact um, that you envision it's going to have on America's energy landscape? So, first of all, uh, wave energy, according to the United States uh, Energy Information Administration, can supply 66% of all the United States energy needs. That's a huge number, that's a huge percentage. For comparison, right now, the United States only produces 20% of its energy from all renewable energy sources combined, wind, solar, uh, hydro, and any type of other technologies that are being used. Uh, so it's a game changer uh, because it can actually provide a significant amount of electricity. Also, wave energy is the least intermittent. It's the most stable source of renewable energy. So it can use to stabilize other renewable energy sources. It can use... It can be used in locations that need electricity 24-7, receiving clean electricity 24-7. And I think what's very important in our specific uh, project and in our kind of entry point to the U.S. market is uh, the fact that we also created kind of the regulatory framework for deployment of wave energy in, United, in the United States in the future. Since we successfully worked with the Army Corps of Engineers for the licenses, for the licenses and with the Port of Los Angeles. So now other ports in the United States know what is the pathway to deploy a wave energy power station of their own. And uh, our partner in the project uh, and the co-investor in the project that we're doing in the Port of LA is Shell, 
uh, Shell Marine Renewable Energy. And together with Shell, we also conducted a feasibility study for the United States coastline, recognizing the first 77 sites in the United States for commercial deployments following the Port of LA project. So now, with the licensing pathway established and our study that was made to recognize 77 sites which are suitable for commercial deployments, it kind of opens the whole US market for eco-wave power. And I think it opens a huge opportunity, not only to giving clean electricity to the public, but also to, as I said before, creating workplaces and creating a new industry. And, uh, you know, President Trump uh, recently spoke about kind of United States being the first one. And, uh, you know, China right now is kind of the first in solar energy. They're producing most of the solar panels in the world. Europe is dominating the wind industry and the United States can actually dominate the wave energy industry, which is a huge statement for the world. No, this is uh, absolutely huge. And I noticed you mentioned Shell. Do you mind uh, discussing who you might expect to attend the launch uh, ceremony in September? Will there be any notable stakeholders, partners, policymakers? So uh, we're working uh, on the agenda right now, but yes, we're expecting to have a uh, representative from government. Uh, we're inviting Governor Newsom. Governor Newsom uh, signed a bill initiative, uh, Senate Bill 605, which was turned into law. Uh, he signed it into law specifically uh, oriented at ocean energy technologies. From what I know, this is the first state, the state of California, uh, which legislated a specific kind of legislation for the implementation uh, of wave energy and the support of wave energy. So we're definitely inviting Governor Newsom, we're inviting the mayor of Los Angeles, uh, uh, representatives from Shell, representatives from Alta C. Uh, we're going to invite uh, our strategic partners in different locations around the world. So for example, we recently signed a feasibility study agreement for a new site in South Africa. Uh, they just updated us that they're going to attend our partner in the project that we're building in Taiwan. Uh, Mr. C.Y. Huang is the chairman of uh, the company that we're working uh, on deploying a project in Taiwan. He will be flying in. So look, opening of a wave energy power station is not something that happens every day, unfortunately, because it's such a new industry. So that's something that's very, very unique, special and generates a lot of interest because most people have seen what you know solar panels look like you can see it on every house uh, what windmills look like but most people never visited the wave energy power station it's interesting it's exciting it's cool we're expecting to have a lot of media attending so i think it's going to be a really really big event for ecowave power and for the world yeah absolutely and what are the next steps for ecowave power following the launch of this los angeles uh, pilot are there plans for scaling or replications in other regions so in the United States, which is a key market for us, we're definitely planning to uh, start contacting, and we actually already started contacted, contacting uh, the 77 sites that we identified through our feasibility study with Shell. Uh, our goal will be, you know, use the pilot kind of as a, a site to enable these ports to come and visit and see kind of the simplicity of installation and the simplicity of licensing, like learning from this site. Uh, so that's kind of our demonstration site. Uh, and the next step for us is definitely going to commercial deployments in different locations around uh, the United States. But also we're uh, looking at locations around the world. Uh, we have agreements signed to for penetration the Asian market. So as I said before, we have an agreement in Taiwan where we're actually making a sale, a, a turnkey project where we're selling equipment to uh, our Taiwanese local partner called IKE. Uh, we also in February this year announced the MOU that we signed with Bharat Petroleum. It's a Fortune 500, 12 billion market cap uh, Indian company. Uh, so we're also selling a pilot project to them to be deployed in their, their oil terminal in Mumbai. Uh, we're also in construction of our first megawatt scale project, which is our largest project to date uh, in the city of Porto in Portugal, which is due to be finished by September 2026. So we basically right now in a great position. Uh, as I said before, it's super rare, unfortunately, to see wave energy projects opening. And right now we have one working grid connected project in Israel. The next one is opening in Los Angeles. The next one is in India, Taiwan and Portugal. So we're basically we'll be operating five projects in the same time. And that's super, super exciting. And I hope that like in the next few years, we will be even able to get to a point where we're operating and building 100 or 200 projects in the same time. And that's the goal for wave energy because 
the market size is gigantic. According to the World Energy Council, wave energy can supply twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now. So that's a huge resource that kind of deserves the attention. Yeah, you definitely gave us a lot of insight here. So maybe just to summarize from an investor's perspective, what makes EcoWave Power a compelling opportunity today? I mean, how do you differentiate from other players in the clean energy space? Uh, if we're looking at other players in the clean energy space, I would say that, as I said before, that wave energy is the most stable uh, source of renewable energy. So in suitable locations, wave energy can actually generate 24-7 as opposed to solar, which is an amazing source, but you have the night, you have cloud coverage, you have winter, and you're not producing any energy. It can also be used to stabilize other renewable energy sources. So I don't see you know, other renewable energy sources as competition. I see them more as complementing each other because each one works kind of in different hours uh, around the day. Uh, EcoF Power is right now the most advanced wave energy company in the field. Uh, we're the only one that are in deployment and actually started sale of uh, wave energy projects. Uh, so I think that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, we have significant operation, operational experience in rural conditions, significant grid connection experience. We were grid connected in Gibraltar for six years, in Israel already for two years. So I think it shows that we know what we're doing. Uh, we signed the investment agreement with Shell in April last year. And one year and four months after, we're already having kind of the official launch of the project. So I think, uh, you know, for a new industry to be able to move so fast, that also kind of shows that we're uh, going in the right direction. And I think what's also unique about EcoWave Power is the fact that, look, we're publicly traded, but the founders, which is David Lab and myself, we hold 50% of the company. So our interests are very much aligned with the interest of our shareholders. And I would say that's definitely an important uh, aspect to take into account. Well, on that note, I appreciate you making all the time today as we pass it off to the viewers as well. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section and consider subscribing as news catalysts like this comes down the wire. Of course, we're going to bring it to you here. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Thank you.